That's a hard question to ask. Uh, no, no. We are holding up and we are yeah, strong. Exactly. And we, will, we will be strong. We are many But we are also human. And it's not. We miss our dad. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Yeah, and it's been, gosh. It's been two months now, or am I? No, it's been three. Three months, okay. We're almost to 100 days. Okay, I spent a lot of time out in Burns, too, covering this. Um, we love little kids. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me, you know, you got a fairly nice group, besides group gathered here. Tell me what you guys are doing here today, and what, what the message really is about today. Well, Angie and I came to see our husbands, that's what we came, and it was a bonus that everybody else was here, because I needed the love and support. I don't know about you. We have been feeling thankful for all of these people for a long time and it's been just a blessing to be able to thank everybody here for all that they've done. Yeah, we are grateful for everyone that continues to come out and, and doesn't stop. Um, we're grateful for the loyalties and that they actually see um, the purpose, that, that we can't stop fighting for our liberties and for our freedoms, which is what God gave us. And did you talk to Ammon today, or did you? Did you get I did. To... Okay. How how is he doing, or what was he? He's very skinny. I am not happy. It's a very emotional visit. Um, they have yet to allow us to have a contact visit. We been, yeah, we haven't been able to even touch our husbands for months, and it's it's really hard. Hardcore criminals are treated worse than our husbands. Better. 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 Sorry. Better. Thank you for that. I can't think straight, obviously. Well, it's been such a tough time for you, and, you know, when I hear you say that, that must be, you know, when you know the kind of people he's in prison with, and for you guys, I know you feel like he's only been trying to help people, so well, many more people. Um, the only thing they did do is uh, try to educate people. It actually started out by loving their neighbor. <laughs> You know, our, our, they couldn't stand the injustices. The Hammonds. Yeah. yeah, the injustices that were happening. There are actually a lot of other families that are dealing with the exact same situation. The Hammonds are, have just been um, in the news most recently, but there are a lot of families this is happening to. A lot. Love your neighbor. Get to know them. Serve them. And we will find out that there is a lot more going on than we realize. Okay. Any other messages here today, or is it kind of just about showing? How did you feel when you found out that your um, husband had been chained to in, with, in handcuffs down in Henderson? What was going through your mind? I personally, uh, fell to my knees in his heart, but it's just not right. I, I couldn't believe it. I almost had a hard time. Um, and then I just prayed because it's just not right. It's cruel. It is cruel. These men deal with, and women deal with criminals so so often that they, it's just an everyday thing. I'm just doing my job. They have forgotten that these are individuals. Animals are treated better. We treat our cattle our better than our than these men have been treated. We don't treat our cattle this way. So some of the things that Henderson d did and some of the things that are happening here are quite like Nazi Germany, you know? Right. They go we, in, we, yeah. they're chained, my they're not fed. Yeah, my husband's been, they don't call it solitary here, they call it segregation. He's been in segregation since the night over some extra items in his room. The men get cold, he had an extra shirt. He's been punished for that. He's been on his own. That's been really hard on him. Um, in Henderson, they went days without eating. Um, I just, it, it's unbelievable. I cannot believe that this is our country and that this is happening. Um, in 2014, they came after us with attack dogs, First Amendment zones, and snipers over some cows that they felt were overgrazing. And that's not how our range has ever been run. Um, when we, when Ammon, when my brother-in-law saw what was happening to the Hammonds, we had people from all over the country come to our aid. And he's like, I'm not just going to sit there and let my neighbor go through this. Amen. Right. So that's what that's why happened. That's why our husbands came came up here. And you know, it is important to know that he went through all the legal processes that he did to try to get attention to this. He wrote letters of grievances. He had signatures. He met with the sheriff multiple times. And please, 
I beg you. I'm, I mean, we have chosen to not do media interviews because they pick and choose what gets put out there. And I pray that this doesn't happen. If it yes, does, that's why we have I will shout from the rooftops that it, that it got cut out. They went through all legality before going to the refuge. You and hear it that is important all the time, too. That the we, there was better that. ways to handle this. All of those ways were exhausted. And all you know what them. they did? They ignored every single direction. Every single direction. The sheriff, he just set that letter of grievance aside. It was given to him again, ignored it. So um, everything is immoral and unethical <laughs> before God's law, correct? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So what about Ryan? Because we know that he is um, re representing himself. How the heck is someone supposed to research how to represent yourself when you get don't get out of your cell except for well, an hour I think a day? that's one of the reasons they put him in segregation. My husband would be a force to be reckoned with in that program if they would actually allow him his you know, his due time in the law library. But they have not been found guilty and they're still... They're not criminals. They, Yeah, but they don't have a criminal history. They haven't been found guilty of a crime and they're still being treated as like hardened criminals. It's, it's outrageous. Is it hard for you to see or think or hope that the justice system would there is no justice so, system. exactly so there's not yeah we so don't you don't, you don't think period. that it's gonna be oh no that judge like has Leslie already Brown. decided in nevada and here their fate yes yeah. our judge in nevada he our lawyer was brought on days before it so he didn't have a very much time to prepare he prepared amazingly and the judge acted like it he wasn't even paying attention. He was like, like he had somewhere to go. He yeah. had already decided the fate of these men. Yeah. yeah. And everybody witnessed it. Yeah. And they do totally. that in every court. All right. Yeah. Totally. Mark Callahan, do you stand by the Bundys? I stand with them. Yes, I do. You do? Yes, I do. You consider yourself a Bundy and a Lavoie? Uh, I, I went. I visited Lavoie's memorial over in uh, the Burns area here a couple weeks ago, and I do stand with them. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, you guys. You mean the memorial? I'll get a little video of you guys out there, but I can talk about that. Tear tear down. And, the, and the deputies are protecting people tearing down the memorial. Is that the memorial? Oh, yeah. I, I, it's the one yeah. about 50 miles from the yep. Burns. Yep. Yeah, the ones that they're allowing people to destroy, desecrate. And then they're protecting them and saying that they're just not cleaning up. Mark, good job, good job. Mark, as Senator of Oregon, what would you do to help well, we, we the people of Eastern Oregon? That's what we need to do. And we need to support uh, folks like the Pamas and the Bundys in terms of getting justice. What district are you running for? I'm running for U.S. Senate against Ron White. Yay!